So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Ms. Desiderio? Here. Mrs. Franco? Here. Mr. Wheeler? Here. Dr. Boyce? Here. Mayor Maranca? Here. Um, open public meeting statement. Adequate notice of the meeting has been provided in the annual notice, copies of which were, po were posted on the bulletin board outside of the police administration building, transmitted to the Hunter Review, the Hunter County Democrat, and filed with the municipal clerk on January 3rd, 2022. So, will you join me in saluting the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, So the uh, township, uh, as you know, took this matter to its sewer engineer uh, through Dan Cleef Engineering. Uh, the pressure, pressure testing was conducted. Um, it was found that the line is holding pressure, uh, but some irregularities in the pressures were noted at the spray field up top. Um, so it was decided uh, after a meeting with the engineer that uh, the engineer would go directly into the design phase for upgrades to the spray field to remedy those irregularities and pressures up there. In the meantime, uh, the system is not yet operational for the season. Uh, before it goes operational, uh, DPW will be aerating the spray, the spray field to uh, increase the percolation rate so we avoid any potential runoff of the spray uh, outside the, you know, the property line of that field. Um, in addition to that, DPW will be doing uh, testing down at the field. I believe it's between the, the pump house and your property. They're the, the intermediate field. Uh, to look for uh, any free chlorine which would indicate that uh, effluent is actually making its way onto that field um, so that we can look for you know any signs of leakage there. Uh, was it tested with effluent or with water? I believe Believe it was effluent. I don't think they would. No, they would probably use air. No, no, no. They, they did it with liquid load. They did it with a liquid load. So they, I believe, they used effluent um, only because to, to source. That's that's a lot of pipe in a long distance to source that much water. You know, it would be a little wasteful. I believe they used effluent. Treated effluent, but yeah, they only treated effluent goes into that line. And um, could you tell us how long the pressure test was for? How long? Uh, they did it over two days. No, they they did the pressure test for I think it was two hours on the first day if I recall correctly, and then about three hours. It could have been up to four hours on the second day. So they did it for a number of hours, and they did it on two consecutive days. And so this is just using a meter at the base of the line and not putting a pressure gauge. I, I believe they use the meter because it's a calibrated meter at the base. That's pretty accurate. That's the meter that they used. And was this under dry conditions or wet conditions? I'm not sure I follow the question. What, what do you mean between dry and wet? I'm not sure. Although the line, the line was capped at the spray field in order to test for pressure holding, the line was capped. I don't think it would matter. Okay. Uh, so it was capped at the top, mm -hmm. and the effluent is fed in, and then they're trying to see if you can uh, 
um, change. So it's Okay, um, could we get a report of that, um, some of the specific details of both the testing and the the engineer, um, and, and the report was discussed, the engineer will not be producing a report because it's, it was determined that it would be more efficient for him to go directly into designing the upgrades to the spray field than to spend time and, and taxpayer money on preparing the report and then having to do, incorporate that report into a design phase. So, we will get uh, specifications for the upgrades, and those will, I, be, I believe, uh, be slated for the 2023 capital budget. So, if effluent is being detected in the field itself, mm -hmm. that would involve the lot. So, the staff would be doing if you just said upgrade in the spray field. So, what are the upgrades for the field itself? What I don't have all the specifics, although I believe that. Uh, right now, all this spraying is controlled manually up there, um, and if uh, you know they, they have to change from one spray head to another spray head around the field, it has to be changed out manually through valving. Uh, the idea is to automate that so that it rotates more frequently throughout a spray cycle, so you don't get a big saturation in one area and you know, a dry area in another. Um, and also to equalize the pressure, so there's less stress on the lawn feeding it. Yeah, that's something that we've talked about for a couple of years, doing that going to a fully automated system. And so, you know, but that, in order to do that, you have to run wires to all the valves along the pipe, so it, that's why it's gonna be rather um, extensive. Has there been any investigation of the pipe itself in terms of going down the camera to see if there's any cracks or open not that I know of, there, there was an examination of some uh, concrete casements where the pipe actually goes through concrete to, to stabilize it, and those were found to be uh, in good condition. What's it? Thrust block. Thrust block. See, I learned something. Totally, totally. Thank you. <laughs> what is the location of the thrust block? I do not know. Do you know where the thrust blocks are? I don't know. No, it would be at, at, at any uh, bed 45 to 90 degrees, so it takes the pressure goes a lot. Okay, so when we have more information, perhaps we could, we could get that off to you, Deborah? Yeah, we'd like sure. any more detail mm -hmm. about the testing. Uh, we'd also <coughs> like to ask more specific questions of the wastewater engineer. Um, we're also concerned about the system starting up again, but that's our answer to what that is questions being answered so is there a date where it's, it's dependent on the weather because the field has to be aerated first it has to dry out more um, so the last I checked with Kevin uh, he was waiting for uh, you know a more uh, rain free week um, they'll do the aeration the aeration can take up to a week to do because they have to do several passes of the field and then uh, they'll start up uh, Okay, so who should I be in touch with about getting a sense of the Shana, if you can send an email to Shana with all your questions and then she'll forward them to the engineer to me to stand and we'll, right. we'll take um, a look. And just let you know, we also got two additional tests back of uh, surface water testing and the E. coli levels are higher than they were before. So, um, what about um, did they test for fecal coliforms? That's what it is. Uh, those are two different, the E. coli and fecal coliforms are two different uh, classes of bacteria. It's the E. coli. Okay. Well, that hasn't been in operation. Right. Well, it's been shut down for the Yeah, it's been shut down all winter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so but, anything you found, if it was recent, it wasn't, it wasn't from the, from the system. Uh, is there E. coli in the lagoon beds themselves? Is that thing from peace or? E. coli could be from anything. Really, any wildlife. Well, it could have been downstream yeah. from the to give you. But well, I mean, that we haven't run that system, so you, if anything you found recently, I mean, it hasn't run since like last probably November. Well, the ponds are full. Is there E. coli in the ponds themselves? Not. I don't. I don't want to say no because you never know what's in an open body of water. But to give you an idea, there's there's several monitoring wells around the lagoon to check for seepage. Uh, fecal coliform is what's tested for inside the well to, to check for seepage. So that's the uh, that's usually the indicator when you're dealing with 
that's <laughs> the ground water, not surface water. Correct. <laughs> okay, so we just like uh, more information. We'll reach out about that, and we'd also like to be informed uh, if and when the system is to be upgraded or started. Um, I don't know if the elbow joint within that field itself was investigated, but I think that would be a good place because that's where the, the elbow is coming out or in area. Okay. Perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. We have another, um, somebody raising their hand, if you could please give us your name and address. Kristen Hassett, 14 Old Turnpike Road. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering what the status was on the sidewalks on Old Turnpike Road. I believe there was responses to the survey. What? I don't know. We, we discussed at the last meeting and the council, the committee authorized us to request that DOT break the project into two phases because we feel we have continuity for phase one based on the uh, feedback we were getting from the residents. Project was uh, the application was for the entire region of the project from Olick Center by the library down to Lambs Road. Um, so we, we, we petitioned the DOT to break the project into two phases until we get that information back. We got to know if we have a project right now. So the, count, the committee at the last meeting authorized the resolution and was sent down to the DOT. We'll be following up. Little, so there's nothing. It's going been on. a little hard getting uh, <laughs> quick responses from DOT. So yeah, but we're, we're working on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anybody else in the audience? Yes, sir. If you can just state your name and your. Sure. Nicholas Lovegrove, Nine Lenore Road, Califon, New Jersey. Um, I wanted to come back to the uh, committee to go on record to thank the Tewksbury Police Department for the ongoing posts that they're doing to promote the safe passing law in Tewksbury. Um, anecdotally, I feel that the law has passed many people by, in fact, when it was actually passed, passed me by, and I'm an avid runner and cyclist in town. So the ongoing awareness that the town is doing, that the police department is doing, is um, fantastic. And I, I uh, am extremely grateful for the work that they're doing. Um, uh, since uh, the last meeting, I've um, met with many walkers and runners, um, uh, people walking their dogs, uh, people with children on the road, and they've all explained to me um, similar stories about the near misses that as pedestrians um, we're experiencing um, on the roads, whether it's distracted driving or, um, or, or dangerous driving. Um, tragically, last week an 11-year-old girl was killed on a bike in Bridgewater Township, um, and in 10 days since that um, loss, uh, 2,400 residents of Bridgewater signed a petition uh, for greater road safety measures such as signage um, throughout the township. Um, may I suggest that um, we do this the other way around here and um, not wait for the accident to happen. Um, has the, com the uh, committee considered placing share the road signage out in the township strategically so we can all enjoy everything the area has to offer safely? Thank you. I think we'll take that up with the police. Thank you. Thank you for your. Uh, are the police in charge of signage? Who handles that? Yeah. Uh, is it the DPW? Is it DPW? Right. DPW on township roads, but we would have to coordinate with police and with Mr. Shrek regarding uh, our roadway standards um, and where the best place for any possible signage would be. Okay, perfect. Would um, that process be a, a conversation? I mean, I've cycled 26,000 miles in two straight in the last 10 years. I, I know where the pinch points are. I know, I know where the problem areas are. Well, I think are. the police are pretty well versed in, in that as well. They're on the roads day in, day I, out. So they'll, they, well, the way it will work, they would probably recommend a spot. We talk it over the engineer or DPW or a good spot for a sign when they think people will see it. You know, and then we go from there. Right. Uh, there are just, there are, there are so many known areas in town which, which I would be happy to, to share if the town is interested in knowing where the dangerous areas are. If, if it's not going to be a conversation. If you'd like to send uh, an email to our township administrator, just detailing those, and then we can uh, use that in our certainly, conversation with yeah. DPW. I think certainly it couldn't hurt. I think it would be great to have you uh, weigh in on those, those areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. 
Anybody else in the audience that would like to say anything to the board at this time? Looks like no. Uh, I guess this is the conclusion of the public participation a time in this um, in the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Um, right now we have um, public hearing adoption. Um, 04-2022. I move we open the public hearing on uh, ordinance 04-2022. I'll second, second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? I have any the publication and the land use board finds that the above reference ordinance not inconsistent with the master plan. Thank you. Um, can we have a uh, motion for? Oh, I'm oh, 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 sorry. Is there anybody in the public that would, would like to make a comment in regards to this? I move we close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Um, we got all in favor. Aye. Any any nays? No. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Desideri? Yes. Ms. Frankel? Yes. Mr. Mueller? Yes. Dr. Boyce? Yes. Mayor Miranda? Yes. Vacation takes it out of you. <laughs> Too much thought. I move we open the public hearing on ordinance number 05 2020. Second. Second by Dana. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Publication. I have approved the publication. Okay. Audience, is there anybody in the audience that would like to make a comment in regards to this? I see none. I'd like to make a motion to close it to the public. I'll second that. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No? Mo motion. Oh, motion to adopt. Like to, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Mrs. Desideria? Yes. Mrs. Frankel? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Dr. Boyce? Yes. And Mayor Moranka? Yes. Consent agenda. Consent agenda. Is there anything on the agenda that we need to remove from the consent agenda? Is there anybody that'd like to remove something? Just the last miscellaneous to be voted on separately, please. Okay, perfect. So we'll remove that. I'll move the consent agenda as amended. Second. Second by Dana. Roll call, please. Mr. Zaria? Yes. Mr. Sprinkle? Yes. Mr. Mueller? Yes. Dr. Boyce? Yes. Mayor Moranka? Yes. Thank you. I'll move the committee authorize a red light siren permit for uh, Mr. Fenton. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll abstain. So abstain. Okay. There we go. Perfect. That was it. Okay. Presentation time. There's no presentation. So we're going to skip over that. Ordinance introduction. Now we have an introduction of ordinances. Um, we have introduction of ordinances. The first one is 06-2022, an ordinance of the Township of Tewksbury, Hunterdon County, New Jersey, amending Title 12, Streets, Sidewalks, and Public Places, Chapter 12.12, .12, Excavations of the Township Code of Ordinances. I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Perfect. Any extensions? No. Okay, perfect. Next is ordinance number 07-2022, an ordinance of the Township of Tewksbury, Hunterdon County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing the Township Development Regulations Ordinance to include a new definition in section 301, words and terms defined, and to create a new inclusionary overlay district in section 714.2, AR-1, Affordable Residential District Overlay. I'll move it. Yes. Second. Second by Dana. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? The public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Perfect. Um, next is 08-2022, an ordinance of the Township of Tewksbury, Hunterdon County, New Jersey, creating Title Three. Revenue and Finance, Chapter 3.16, Farm and Assessment Inspection Fee of the Township Code of Ordinances. I'll move the introduction of 08-2022. I'll second that. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Okay, perfect. The public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Good busy day. Okay. Um, 09-2022, County Year 2022 Ordinance to exceed the municipal, exceed the municipal budget appropriations limit and to establish a cap bank per NJSA 40A uh, colon 4-45.14. I move the introduction of Ordinance 09-2022. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition, any abstentions? The public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Perfect. Um, next, 10-2022, bond ordinance providing appropriation of $1,518,500 for various improvements in and by the Township of Duesburg and the County of Huntington, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $1,134,500 bonds or notes of the Township of Finance and part of the appropriation. I'll move um, introduction of Ordinance 10 2022. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or any abstentions? Aye. The public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Okay, perfect. Now we have intro introduced the 2022 municipal budget. I'd like to give a motion for 72-2022 for res a resolution for self-examination of the budget. I'll move that. Is there a second? Second. Perfect. Ms. Desiderio? Yes. Ms. Frankel? Yes. Mr. Mueller? Yes. Dr. Boyce? Yes. Mayor Moranka? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd also like to make a motion um, for 73-2022, a resolution to introduce the 2022 municipal budget. I'll move it. I'll second that. Okay. Don't move forward yet. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you want to discuss it first? Or do they want to discuss it first? Discussion? Sure, I can do it. Yeah, I think that might be good. Okay, Thank so you. for the 2022 budget introduction, um, the Tewksbury Township 2022 general budget tax levy amounted to $6,265,724, which represents an increase of $162,216, or 2.7%, from the $6,103,508 in 2021. The fund balance utilized as anticipated revenue is $1.6 million. The township ended the year of 2021 with a $2.1 million in fund balance. The average residential assessment in 2022 is approximately $630,451, compared to $631,280 in 2021. The total general budget for 2022 is $10,582,545.92. The 2022 budget process started in October 2021. Department heads submitted their preliminary budget requests, which were reviewed by the CFO and the Township Administrator. The Finance Committee had many budget meetings with the CFO and the Township Administrator before finalizing the budget in March. The Township Committee also held four public work sessions from January to March to go over the budget. The budget as presented has been provided to our auditors for their review. And we so submit budget. Thank you very much. Okay. And just uh, the uh, user-friendly budget will be available. Yes. Starting. Um, by next Monday, it will be up okay. on the website, the Township website. Um, am I allowed to ask if anybody else on the, um, Anybody else have any questions from the administration over there? No? Any questions? No? Perfect. All right. Um, we have to vote now. Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Azaria? Yes. Mr. Franco? Yes. Mr. Mielitz? Yes. Dr. Boyce? Yes. Mayor Moran? Yes. And I'd like to say the public hearing will be May 10th, 2022. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. I'd like to thank the board and the administration this year for working so hard on the budget. It was a big job this year with all the changes we had, and Mary especially for really coming to the table and really doing what you had to do. I'm sure you had sleepless nights over it. 
And we will so appreciate your time and effort on the town thing. Really truly. Cool. And Mary and I would like to thank Dr. Boyce and, and, and Peter for walking us through the process and you know, both you know, being our first time right. so well, it's great that we all work so cohesively, yes. and I'm proud to say, as a board, that we really work well together. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, okay, now we have um, reports. Um, we'll start with the Township Committee. Peter, would you like to start, sir? Sure. I just, uh, well, we just did the budget, so that's finance, I guess. Uh, everybody has it now. Um, so uh, I'd just like to thank everybody. I know it was a little more involved this year than in the past because you know some institutional knowledge that had carried over from prior years is no longer there. So we had to clean up. And then plus with the new rescue plan and all that stuff we had to sort out. So with our auditor and Mary and Shana. So thank you everybody for helping there. Um, as far as public works goes, uh, not too much really. Kevin's been out, so I haven't really talked to him much, but uh, just like to note that uh, Mark Van Doren retired uh, since our last meeting at the retirement party here. I don't know how many, how many, 30, 30, 36 years. 36 years he was here, so he'll be missed, but he's still in the area, so we'll see him from time to time. And uh, that's about all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Ms. Frankel? Um, I, again, I, I want to echo what Andrea said and thank you all for the budget preparation this year. I know. I asked lots of questions because I hadn't been so through the process so um, deeply, and I appreciate everybody helping me out with that. So, and we did a great job. So, thank you all. Um, and I'm happy to see that um, in the capital, or not in the capital, the VCOM is included. So, I, I, who is contacting them to let them know we're going forward? I can reach out. You want me to reach out? Those questions. Be calm. Be calm. You want to reach out to me? I know. Okay, it's soon. Yeah. Good. We took that. You know, we took that out of capital. Yes, I do know that. Um, so uh, this past Thursday night, there was a uh, meeting organized by the Parks Committee of uh, many of the not-for-profit entities we had in town, and. Um, so I attended and it's represented for the Tooth Education Foundation. And um, my takeaway was that everybody's looking for volunteers, everybody wants new members, and everybody's trying to fundraise. <laughs> so, um, and a lot of great effort done by a lot of volunteers in our township. We have many organizations that uh, coordinate, work together, and are very productive. So um, I'm very appreciative of that. We, we all know who they are. Um, this Thursday, we have a meeting scheduled to meet with a resident in town who um, has a lot of experience in live stream meetings. So um, it's just an opportunity for us to hear him out and to see what um, what the process is and if we might be capable of doing that. I know there's some, uh, Justin has helped me out with some of the legal um, issues, being a municipality, being a government organization, having these uh, meetings. So we may have some setbacks and it may not be possible, but Thursday we're gonna talk about that and see where we can go. Um, and then this afternoon, or this morning, we had a meeting with um, AT&T, uh, talking about potential you know, services they could provide us, and we'll talk about that more later, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Dana, would you like to go? Sure, so uh, we had a county meeting. Uh, it's one of our first meetings back in person. Uh, it was mine actually. Uh, there's a lot of talk about um, uh, charging stations throughout the county. Big, big push for that. Um, so kind of staying one step ahead with ordinances and uh, um, information so that you're one step ahead when the applicant comes to these charging stations, I think is prudent upon us. Um, on a side note, um, I, I know that many of you are familiar um, with the property south of 78, the Bellmead property um, that uh, Brendan Furlong was purchasing. And I'm bringing this up here because I think it's a, important um, to let you know. So uh, he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to tr purchase this property. Um, and it's been working for kind of the glitches with the Highlands. After the glitches with the Highlands, it became the glitches with the DEP. Um, and the DEP then wanted to do an archeological study on the property. 
So, you know, two to three hundred thousand dollars later, um, the DEP went out and took a look at the property and said it was deemed that not uh, that it couldn't be used for his business. Um, so this came yesterday to me by shock. I didn't even know they had the DEP had gone out. Apparently, due to the wetlands and the delineation, and um, they've now deemed it. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I'm bringing this up here for, for a couple of reasons, but I am extremely disturbed and disappointed um, in the whole process uh, because to me, it's what Tewksbury is about. It's part of the, you know, the farming and the horses, and the, he's been a veterinarian here forever. Uh, and he spent an exorbitant amount of money, and the DEP, he went and did this archeological study now, and for artifacts on the property, and in the middle of it, they, I guess, decided to go out and take a look at the property, and said now, for some unknown reason, it's now deemed that he can't do anything there, because the property has changed. So, anyway, if anybody knows anybody to, to help, it's, it's actually a, a disgrace and a sin. Um, so, uh, it's a shame. And uh, the backlash that I got, because it came back to me as if the township committee and the planning board had done something wrong. And, and I said, no, no, no. I said, you know, and it was just in passing that I heard about it. It was a veterinarian that came out to take care of a horse that was sick at the, the new farm I'm at. And he said, I can't believe what you've done to the furlongs. I was like, oh, my God. You know, we didn't do anything. So I just wanted to let you know and give you an update. So hopefully maybe something will change. But that's kind of where it is now. So. All of a sudden, the DEP wants to get involved and then decides that they don't want to, and there's nothing that Mr. Furlong can do in regards to that, Stan? I've, I've had it happen to me uh, in developer projects where the DEP will pop up with an issue that kills the entire project, be it a wetlands delineation, a dam remediation, an archaeological issue. But shouldn't this have come out first? So who owns the property now, like today? Who owns it? It's the original people. Still felt me? Yeah. So, and, and that was my biggest thing is, you know, three years down the road and maybe it'll dry out and then they'll be back for another application. So, you know, the average person to me, you know, if, if, if I was purchasing it, right, I wouldn't spend two to $300,000. After you gave me the first hurdle with the, with the Highlands, I would have been scared. Then you gave me the second one with the DEP, I probably would have run. But now one has come out of nowhere. This is nowhere, nowhere. This isn't archaeological. This is nothing. And he's done the study now. So why is it coming up now? Did they do a, a, a committee woman? Did they do a, a phase two archaeological study? This was just the phase four. It has nothing to do with the archaeological study. That was done and completed. Apparently, it was being all taken care of. They went out and examined the property on their own on April third, without saying anything to anyone. And they deemed it undeveloped. What reason? I don't know. But you know, you've got a guy now that is, you know, moving on to Bedminster or somewhere else now. You know, and then the fact is, is, is you know, it's, it's devastating to me. You know, could have been, you know, and going back, listen, to what it was going to be or what it could have been, you know, could have been a strip mall, it could have been anything at that time, you know, and, and you have somebody here that was using it for farmland and pasture, which is, you know, what this is about and what our town is about. And, and for this to happen, and you know, I, I don't know. And for him to jump through the hoops that he's jumped through, because he really loves being here. I mean, that's. A, I mean, there's a lot to be said. He's been here his entire business. No, I know. His well, we entire know life. That. We all know that. Is there something we we can, as a as a board, write a letter to the DEP stating our dismay in regards to this, or is that not correct? I don't even know if anybody knows. We want to know. Yeah. The the, the township committee really doesn't have the jurisdiction to get involved in that issue. Um, especially because, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, Ms. Desiderio is correct that, that he may be back for a future application. Uh, we don't want to create a conflict situation. So, who it's knows? Such a shame. Right. right. I said, boy, it's kind of kind of funny when you go out and check the wetlands in the middle of a monsoon. Mm -hmm. Right. I would have tried to check it during the drought. This sounds a little funny and fishy to me, and the whole thing sounds like it's poor. So I'm just making sure it goes on the record that that's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you that's very all. much. Then. Yeah. Dr. Boyce? Yes, we had a green team meeting. Uh, 
and we now have a new person in place. Stan will describe uh, some of the wrinkles that we're having with the uh, administration building area as far as uh, having our DPW guys do the work, right? We became a little bit more involved. So, just now we have more of those details. Um, the Affordable Housing Subcommittee has not met, but you know, part of our agenda tonight is continuing in with the you know, Penrose application in, in the back here. And uh, I wish everyone you know, a good Passover and a happy Easter. Thank you very much. I forgot all about that. Yeah. It's Holy Week. Um, That's right. Well, um, let me just say this. Everything that I was to discuss has already been discussed. DPW, Kevin has been out. His wife is in surgery. Um, I hope she's doing well. Um, DPW continues to work hard, getting it done. We also talked about um, Mr. Van Doren retiring. We'll tell you, he looks pretty good. He's retiring, looks like he's going to continue to have a, a really nice life. Um, and what else? We, we talked about the, the, the affordable, uh, the subcommittee affordable housing that we have not met yet. We, we, we will meet soon on the same. We will be meeting soon. We have to pick a date. Um, and um, again, thank you to the board for uh, working through the budget. Uh, I think it was, it was very productive this year. And uh, happy Passover and happy Easter to everybody. And that's all I have as well. Um, okay. Um, Stan? My turn. You're up, sir. Thank you. I did submit a report last week and um, I'll just summarize uh, some of the highlights. Uh, our, our monthly DPW interaction, we always help with um, permit reviews for uh, road openings or for driveway permits, but uh, one of the last uh, road opening applications was a bit of a doozy. The uh, New Jersey American will be replacing nearly a mile of, uh, actually more than a mile of uh, water main on Hollowbrook Road, uh, installing new eight-inch main. And uh, we were able to uh, negotiate that they'll be resurfacing Hollowbrook Road from edge of pavement to edge of pavement when they're finished with the project. Um, they're fully compliant with our road opening uh, ordinance, which requires bonding for the work that they're, uh, that they're putting in, uh, um, escrow for inspection, uh, certificates of insurance. Uh, they're working with us for pre-construction photographs. We're doing detour routes. We work with the police. Uh, we have laid out areas and we should be uh, ready to initiate the project uh, sometime next next week depending on um, the detour uh, uh, the detour route. So it's approximately a million dollar project and I was actually surprised that there's a water main on Hollowbrook Road because it, uh, not too many houses tied into it. And there's also uh, a retaining wall for a length of probably hundred feet that uh, there, we thought it may have been some stabilization problems it's not there's some settlement of the existing water line next to that now will be addressed during the project so it's a it's it's quite a project but, but uh, New Jersey Americans uh, fully compliant the stormwater ordinance amendments we did have a meeting on that uh, Deborah and, uh, and Hope uh, Calvin were present they submitted suggested revisions to the ordinance, the attorney, myself, and the administrator are reviewing those and hopefully we'll get to that shortly. Uh, NJDOT grant applications, I did comment on Old Book Sidewalk, what we're doing with that. The 2020 grant is for work on uh, Calathon Cokesbury Road. That project's looking to start the week of April 25th. Um, the Old Wick Park Green Initiative, where um, we're beginning our survey work on that. That's with the Highlands grant we have for the planning work. Um, that tied into what Dr. Boyce said regarding uh, the some of the green infrastructure we were planning up at the, the municipal building. The scope of that works beyond the capabilities of public works. The, the equipment they have at the time, the grading is quite extensive. So we're going to concentrate more of the work on an existing basin in the in the north um, the northeast corner of the property. Um, it, 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 
it, it's a basin that was there. I didn't even know it was there, so it's been silted in, so we have to restore that. And uh, Public Works will be looking at that. I'll kind of concentrate more of our green efforts down in, uh, in Old Park as that project goes. So the next step is survey, and that's in the queue to get that finished. Um, we did one uh, grading surface water management plan review that was denied uh, the last the last round will submit for um, for compliance there were no blasts at the uh, old Macquarie we did not witness any perk tests last month and uh, the three uh, wastewater facilities are operating normally and we had a discussion on uh, old spray field that's my report when you say the old wick, um, you were talking about the green infrastructure, you're, talking, you're referring to the old wick, the playground? We're referring to the playground as part of it. Okay. But we're referring to the entire old wick park. And it's bordered by two trenches. Okay. Um, those will be reestablished. We're going to be putting in rain guards. We're going to be putting bioswales. All the infrastructure that's mentioned in the state uh, BMP best management practice manual we're going to show an example of what that is and interestingly enough this past month they just had 12 hours of recertification on the stormwater compliance we've been doing it every five years and uh, some of the uh, requirements are going to be uh, increased for this next round of uh, rules so I want to be a little bit ahead of that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being proactive Stan. Sure. We appreciate that. Okay, is that the conclusion of your report? That's the conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Township Attorney, Justin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in addition to my confidential report, we did discuss uh, the old sewer plan and uh, the plans for the upgrades of the spray, spray fields as well as the um, aeration of the uh, spray field and the uh, regular testing that will occur during the spring season this year. Um, to comment on uh, the New Jersey American Water uh, Project on Hollowbrook, uh, tonight we introduced Ordinance 06-2022, which amends our code to place a moratorium on uh, road excavations uh, for a period of five years after they're resurfaced. That's uh, to help protect our roads from being excavated uh, right after they're resurfaced. The town spends uh, good money to do that. We want to try to protect it and keep it intact. Uh, you know, uh, emergencies notwithstanding. Uh, we will have executive session this evening on contract negotiations, and that is my report. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Um, Shana, would you, you like to? Um, I think everyone received my report. Uh, a large chunk of it deals with uh, staffing. As you know, we've been backfilling positions. Um, the new receptionist land your secretary starts on Monday. Um, our new um, violations clerk in the court starts uh, tomorrow. So we're filling all of those positions. I think we have one part-time position and a DPW position to ultimately fill and then uh, we're fully staffed. Um, I did cover this in my report, but we um, received a $10,000 grant reimbursement from the Highlands Council for our work on the housing element and fair share plan which um, takes care of some of the work that our planner Darlene Green um, did on that plan. And um, the mayor and deputy mayor and I are continuing to, to meet with our uh, emergency services. Uh, next week is the Old Fire Company. So we look forward to that. Um, also, I'd like to say thank you for really being diligent to, for, whom, for whom else you work with, Mary, Jen, in, in filling up these, these, these positions. It's going to make everybody's job a little easier in the long run. So I appreciate you doing that and getting that done. I know in the beginning to try and train everybody is going to be a little tough, but after I heard, I think it's going to be much easier. And thank you for working so diligently on that. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, looks like the chief of police is not here this evening. No, chief Harlow will not be here this evening. He did say that he, had, he did not have any additional comments from to his report. Okay, okay perfect. Okay. Um, this time yeah. into um we'd like to make a motion to go into executive session so we'll do discuss to discuss contract negotiations um is there a second i'll second that thank you very much all, all in favor aye aye any abstentions pete 
Keep them from my apple trees now. Um, thank you everybody for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. Tonight, Pete? Tonight. Well,